Hey everybody, this is Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm talking today with uh, Allison. Hello. Hi, Christian. Thank you for having me here. So folks that don't know who you are, where you are, and what you do, why don't you give us that lowdown? Okay, well, I, um, I live in Brazil. I, um, I actually I work with Microsoft Technologies since uh, 1997. Got my first certification, was in NT in 99. I had the, the opportunity and pleasure to live in Africa for five years. I worked there for five years and then I, I came back. I worked for the partners there and for Microsoft, for MCS and for an Israeli uh, company as well. So uh, uh, I, I love to, actually I love Microsoft technology. I love to work with uh, uh, migration services, ex exchange, um, online security, uh, mail security. So th this is my uh, my field. Are you independent right now, or do you work like for a number of kind of long term clients? Yeah, I'm independent. I have uh, I have contracts with partners in, uh, in in Brazil and some other countries as well. So um, uh, yeah, that's it. I'm, I'm helping them. Actually, they are uh, building their strategies with Microsoft. And I'm helping also them to, uh, to get technicians to get proficient in Microsoft technology, mostly infrastructure and, uh, and 365. Well, I imagine your, your adventure over in Africa and, and where, where were you in Africa? Were you all over the place? Are you focused in one or two areas or? I've been mostly in Angola right after the civil, the end of the civil war in 2004. Yeah. Uh, Mozambique. It's an amazing, beautiful Mozambique, Cape Verde as well, um, Namibia, and uh, South Africa. I've been to South Africa so many times, but well, I love it over there. I'd love to be able to explore more of it. Well, that's interesting. So the, were those like largely infrastructure projects then, kind of building stuff out, getting them ramped up for the, the modern tech yeah, era? Yeah, back in that time, uh, there was, there was uh some uh right after the 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 war you know they were re rebuilding the country mm -hmm. so uh th there was a lot of opportunities for many many companies around the world to go there and rebuild also it and uh i was working there for the oil company for uh, telecommunications for the government itself you know uh, to interconnect everything Mm -hmm. So uh, it was really, really nice. It's really, really nice when, when we, are, we are doing something that you like and you see the impact also in the people's lives, you know. So yeah. it's not only about going there and, and, uh, and, and make money. Of course, I was not working for free. You know, I, I didn't leave my country to work for free there. But I could see the impact on people's lives, you know, when you see that the service is working better for the population. This is something that uh, it's, it's really, really nice. And I could also spend my, my uh, time working for, not working, but uh, how can I say? Um, I gave speeches for the universities and that mm -hmm. kind of, of stuff, yeah. you know? So uh, to, to use my time also to, to be more integrated with the local community there uh, was really, really nice time. Really, I, I, I love the, the place. Yeah. They have very beautiful sites there. Yeah, I, I, I did a, a tour with a, a group of, of friends. We did uh, kind of a Microsoft 365 a red bus tour. And we started, we went to, uh, uh, you know, flew over to Durban, but we drove from Johannesburg down to the coast and all the way down to, to Cape Town and just realized, you know, how beautiful that part of the world is. Just, it was an incredible experience to go and do. And I, I have friends that uh, did events. And of course, um, in the SharePoint community, the SharePoint Saturday event phenomenon for years of going and doing small, you know, regional events to these, uh, these communities all over the African continent were incredible. But I, I've got a lot of friends, I know uh, MVPs that have, you know, based out of South Africa, but also up in um, Jordan and Egypt and, and uh, UAE that you know, go and, and do other events and work with uh, communities down inside of Africa as well. 
there's a lot going on. Yeah. It's just um, not to, to spend too much time on just on the Africa uh, you know, topic, but it's, uh, you know, to be there and see with the, some of that, that infrastructure set up. It's one of the um, areas that is, since so much has moved to mobile development, and it's just yeah. explosive growth in, in app development and mobile development that's happening in those parts of the world because it's easier with all the landlines, all the you know the wires in the ground here, they go yeah. set up towers and they're doing everything via they, mobile. They can grow faster. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's it. When I, when I was there, it was amazing because they got everything new, you know? So, uh, uh, for example, if you were going to the, to, uh, the customs, for example, they, they had uh, brand, brand servers, uh, brand um, appliances. They were rebuilding from, from 20, over 20 years of war. Hmm. So there is a lot of uh, things to rebuild there. And there was, uh, there was also some uh, challenges. For example, they had a problem with the uh, communication. They had 64K, not even one, one megabyte or one, one mega, megabit, 64K, you know, for the banking communication. Yeah, and uh, uh, you had to set up Active Directory and uh, you know domain controllers. We didn't have much opportunity for consolidation in that time. You see, so uh, it was very, very, very uh, challenging. But I believe that now they have they they have improved a lot. I I believe so. I know there are more uh, communication companies. You know, there are fiber optics and mo mobile the mobile yeah. services really made a difference, especially in those countries that uh, needed to uh, a quick development. So, uh, well, it's interesting yeah. in that space too. I, I, around that same time in the early 2000s, I was working for a tech company where we were building these edge services and, and had actually devices because we, same thing, we were working mostly around Asia Pacific, but a lot of these manufacturing facilities uh, in Malaysia and the Philippines and other countries that, you know, there, there was a, like a shared, uh, uh, you know, uh, 128K line. So they'd actually literally just unplug from one computer and go, oh, you need to update your email and plug it into their computer and do that <laughs> yeah. shared line. Um, and, and so, but we'd have to build solutions where we had these broadband, these, these thick connections, but we'd have to communicate with these, these partners that were in these disparate parts of the world and, and so we'd have to build our solutions, really streamline the communications and, and send essential information, you know, and automate, uh, you know, in between systems back and forth. But, and we did it. And, you know, these, these near real time automated solutions um, across these very limited connections. Yeah, I, I can say I, I miss that part of the technology in time, you know, I really don't miss it. <laughs> I yeah. love fiber optics and good yeah. technology. I, I can say that, but yeah. but uh, but it was nice to to live in that time and to and to do something for the countries. It was a very very good time, and I, I was also in a, in the from twenties to thirties, you know. So uh, yeah, yeah, it was it was a good time. That's fun. Well, so you've been in the community. You've been doing the tech for a long time. You've been in the Microsoft ecosystem for a long time. And yet you just got your, you're a Microsoft 365 apps and services MVP. Uh, so what was your path to becoming an MVP? Well, I can, I can tell you that I, uh, I, I miss it a lot of time. Uh, how can I say? I, I, I wasn't very comfortable. I'm still not very comfortable uh, using the internet, you know, YouTube and uh, Instagram and that kind of stuff. So uh, I can say that, I, I missed it a lot of time. I should have started earlier. You know, I could be helping other people, more people, if I had started earlier. Mm -hmm. I was uh, working as a trainer. I'm 20 years MCT. Yeah, 23, I believe. Hmm. MCT. And uh, I, I like to, to give the trainings, uh, but I, I had some kind of resistance with the internet. You know? So to my, uh, how can I say, to the, to the MVP, I believe that the, the first uh, step is to is to really work uh, doing what, what you what you do best, you know, and showing uh, and helping uh, the, the people, showing them how they can overcome situations on a daily basis. So mm -hmm. uh, um, I have a 
I have a for let's say five years, five or four years ago, uh, there was a an event in the city where I'm living, and uh, there was a guy promoting it. He was an MVP, and I just said, "Listen, I have two uh, speeches, two presentations that I have worked with uh, ransomware. One of them was ransomware. The other one I don't remember right now." And I told him, do, "Do you need any help? May I help you? Do you need anyone to go there?" And he said, "Yeah, of course." So that was my first uh, contact with someone from the community, from the MVP community. Uh, I just approached him and said, well, "Listen, I'm here. If you need help, I'm here to help." And uh, that's how it started regarding the MVP, right? Yeah. Um, so uh, uh, three years ago, there was also a. Uh, an event MVP conference in in Brazil. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's not. A, it, it doesn't work actually only in Brazil. It, it it started in Brazil, but now it's working. Uh, it's happening over the internet. So we have also guests from other uh, parts of the world, not only Brazilians. And uh, uh, he also asked me to to give a, a security a presentation regarding security. Uh, so I, I did it, uh, and then I, I started doing my YouTube channel and working on my YouTube channel. I, I really crossed that line, you know. As you can see, I'm still not really, really comfortable, uh, but uh, we have to start. So yeah. as long as we start, you go and, and you, you get better, see? That's one of the, the I think you just nailed it. There's a really difficult thing for one of the common things that I hear from MVPs is that look, even without the MVP, I'd be doing the same stuff. I'd be doing, you know, helping with the community. I'd be involved with my user group and and creating the content, doing the other things. A lot of us have a difficult time. It was it, it, some people look at me and it's like some of the stuff that I do out there be like it's really easy, like Christian, to for him to go and do kind of self-promotion of these different things. I had to learn that skill. It took a while. I had managers at past jobs who were like, you need to do a better job of letting people know of the good work that you're doing. I'm like, I don't care. I'm just going to let me do my job. I just want to do my job and do it well. Yeah. And you know, why do I need to go and sell people on the fact that I'm doing my, I see I'm doing my theater show hands, you know, yeah. uh, why do I need to sell people on that? But you need yeah. to do that. You need to catch the attention. If your intent is to become an MVP, you, you have to get the attention of Microsoft and others within the community, but you need to do it in a way that you're not, I don't know what the right, right way to phrase it is. So, you know, narcissistic. You know? Yeah, yeah. You know? I, I wasn't I wasn't actually expecting to get nominated. I didn't ask for it. Uh, a, a, a member of the community uh, recognized the the work and he said, well, I'm, I would like to, to nominate you. you. Would you like it? Of course. And uh, I believe that the MVP is something that will, will help you to do uh, how, how can I say to achieve more when mm -hmm. we are in a bigger community? You see, mm -hmm. so uh, if you were if you're not interested on helping others and helping people and promoting uh, security solutions, if you're not passionate about it, I don't think I don't believe it's it, it's gonna work. You know, yeah. so I didn't I didn't work expecting the MVP award. I when when, we, when actually I I was so happy when I got nominated. That I I, uh, I I didn't believe like uh, well I don't I don't know if this will happen so I I stopped thinking about it and then the award I, I got the May with the award you know I saw I was uh, uh, totally flabbergasted I was very very happy with it but I, I believe it's something that we have to start doing not thinking about the MVP when I was ten years ago in Africa I was giving uh, speeches for free in the universities you know. I, I was after the work. There was some uh, trainees, very young young guys uh, from the university in Angola, and they were they were working with me. I mean, not directly with me, but they were there, and I was open to teach them and to have a conversation with them, you know, and to learn from them as well because we we 
I know that sounds cliche, but it's not. Every time you're talking to someone else uh, about anything, or especially in technology, we all you, you always learn something, you know, from their point of view, uh, yeah. from from their uh, needs, from the situation that the guy leaves or he is uh, working, you know, and the, the needs that they have. And I wasn't a different culture, a different country. It was a it was a great opportunity for me, you know, to work with ONGs, nonprofits as well. Mm -hmm. So it's something that I have done, even if my with my local community. I mean, uh, I believe this is the spirit, you know, we need to start doing something to help others. Mm -hmm. And when the pandemic arrived, then I, I couldn't do it. I, I love to do some mentoring as well, you know, to have uh, people that want to, to follow the path in Microsoft certification path or to get a better a better career or a better job it was something that i was doing and doing uh, uh, for free you know so if you go to the internet you can if you use the internet you can maximize this yeah. so uh when the pandemic arrived i started to recording uh on youtube i still have a, a very uh, I, I don't have too many subscribers in in my channel yet uh, and I don't think it will be a lot of subscribers because what we we talk, it's it's very uh, how can I say, it's a niche, you know. We we're not talking, yeah. right? Yeah, we're not talking to something that is funny or. I always so, say it's kind of a joke. I always say just like you know, hey, look, it doesn't. I don't care if I get you know thousands of of views on a video, and I've had videos that have done very well that way, but majority of them have, you know, dozens of views on them. And I say, but yeah, but if I could help one person, you know, it makes That's that worthwhile, point. you know? Then you know what? I have stopped it uh, for a moment. I stopped it with the recordings. I started very, uh, I believe five videos and something. And one guy wrote something for me that changed everything. He said, don't stop recording. I'm, I'm missing you. You helped me a lot. And, uh, and then I, I realized that, well, since I'm helping that, guy, helping that guy and I'm probably helping others that are not writing anything. And uh, I, I said, well, if you're doing something, I mean, if you're not doing something that you could do to help others, you, you are not doing really well. You know, you should, you should start doing something to help others. So uh, this is the, the, the real motive that I have started to do, you yeah. see? So uh, uh, you have to separate the time. I was doing it overnight uh, or over the weekends, you see. But it was really, really nice uh, to get the feedback from people. This is the fuel that we, we all need, you know, when, when we see the results in other people's lives and they saying, well, this is uh, helping me. Thank you so much. Or sometimes they don't say anything, you know, especially when we, we are starting, we, we, we just... Uh, they just hit the, the like button. It, it's already uh, fine, you know. So uh, I, I didn't was expecting the MVP. It was something even, uh, it was a really, really surprise for me. Yeah. Well, it's, it's uh, as I said, I mean, uh, the, the vast majority of MVPs, we all have the same answer. Like we would, you know, we're, there's other reasons why we're doing it. It's not about the getting the award. This It's nice to get. Um, yeah. get that recognition but you know we'd each we'd keep doing the things that we're doing regardless of the award um it, it's yeah. it's part of us and so much of it is like uh i did the same thing I, I you know for for me it was you know inside of a job this is in the mid 90s i was handed the task of uh, onboarding and training users on several new technology platforms uh, that I had to go and develop some level of expertise. I was by no means an expert on those things, but I was here, I was standing in front of a classroom training people on it. So I, I knew the fundamentals of that. And as yeah. questions they would ask, and these, these were like week long trainings that I was leading and given the materials like here, here's what to walk them through and to go and do. But they'd ask questions that I would on, during the breaks or it, on the evenings go and search for the answers to questions that I couldn't answer. And I was found myself learning and I started to really enjoy that. And, and the feedback was fantastic. And I and so as I it's interesting as I my career progressed and this was that was not in the Microsoft ecosystem in the mid 90s and and 
I started to write more and more content. And I used to look at like questions that people would ask. I'm like, I, I don't know. I'm going to go find that out. And that turned into a blog post that turned into another article. Uh, and then in the, you know, the last 15 years that turned into a short video that I would go and create. And, and, and so I, I just enjoy doing that, answering the question for myself, helping that one person and then other people, you know, found use out of that. So I, yeah. I you know, similar thing where people, I, a lot of MVPs experience this where I'd been speaking at events for years and somebody's just like, well, how long have you had your MVP, Christian? I'm like, I'm not an MVP. They're like, you're not. And uh, he submitted my name that weekend. So uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's the kind of thing where, you know, it, it's, it's not about the glory of becoming an MVP, yeah. but uh, I mean, there's definitely yeah. hurts to be an M MVP, but yeah, it's, but I think the story is pretty consistent with folks. Yeah. I believe that MVP is not a, an end, you know, right. People, people see as a, a, a coronation and an end, and now it's not an end. Actually, uh, it's just exponential. So uh, you, you are now part of a, a, a family, and uh, and you're, this is going to help you to, uh, to, to, how can I say, to expand what you're doing to others. You see yeah. others you see, and uh, you, you, uh, for example, uh, we are here talking, right? So you saw, probably you'll see, you get notified. I don't know how did you know, but I said, well, there is an, another MVP here. Let me chat with this guy and see. So uh, this is something that it, it, it's going to increase the network, you see. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, besides also help, helping others, I really like Microsoft technology. So uh, I really like to promote Microsoft technology. I see uh, business uh, shutting down because of... Uh, uh, ransomware attacks, you know, in the, in the country that I live, it, it's happening also in US, it's happening mm -hmm. in, in in Portugal, it's happening everywhere, you know. So uh, if, if you can, if you're passionate about it, as I am, and you can do something and post it over the internet, listen, we, there is this solution that every Microsoft 65 has, and you can apply this and this, and this will might uh, prevent you from getting infected, you know, we're talking about uh, uh, the, the jobs, you know, the, 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 some guy that's working on a shop and he's not going to work for the entire week because there was a ransomware attack, you see? Yeah. So uh, uh, I, I, I am passionate at this point, you know, not only, uh, of, of course it, it happens, you know, as a result of the work that you're doing, but the, the main results that I see, it's in like, it, it really makes me a, a thrive is to see that uh, where we are training, where we are teaching, you know, and, and uh, those events that we are doing are helping uh, the, the community. Yeah. Well, that's that's I, exact same reason that I do it. So, well, listen, I really appreciate your, your, your time and getting to know you at, and hopefully we'll get to meet you in, in person at one of the, uh, MVP summits if they ever happen in person again. Uh, yeah. Hopefully it happens next year, but um, we'll really appreciate it. For folks that want to uh, learn more about you, get to uh, you know, to reach out and connect with you, what are the best ways to reach you? Well, Instagram uh, at araujo.tech, T-E-C-H. Araujo is uh, A-R-A-U-J-O. Uh, my YouTube channel as well is... Uh, it's it's in Portuguese actually. So if you want to send a direct message, you, you better uh, send to uh, Instagram or uh, also LinkedIn. Araujo uh, slash in slash Araujo Tech T C H, and uh, in my email address Araujo at Araujo Tech. And of course, I'll have all the links out on uh, YouTube and on the blog post as well. So, well, yeah, okay. Alison, it's, Thank it's you. great to meet you, and uh, let's keep in touch. Let's keep in touch. All the best. Thank you. Wow. Wow.